Beloved of God, Psalms Wednesday, welcome. Let's spend some time dwelling in God's Word. Psalm 37 is our invitation to be in Scripture together here this morning. It's a longer passage, so let us go ahead and read together or listen along in devotion. Psalm 37, we're going to start in verse 23. Our steps are made firm by the Lord, and He delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, or their children begging bread. They are ever giving liberally and lending, and their children become a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, you shall, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their steps do not slip. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their power or let them be condemned when they are brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on the destruction of the wicked. I have seen the wicked oppressing and towering like a cedar of Lebanon. Again I passed by, and they were no more. Though I sought them, they could not be found. Mark the blameless and behold the upright, for there is posterity for the peaceable. But transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The posterity of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the name of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Word of God, word of life, may it be so for you today as you dwell in God's word richly. Um, yes, Karen. I'd love to come see the kittens again here. I'll bring communion. We'll uh, also an Advent devotion that are uh, in here. So if you'd like a, a, de a small devotion for the season of Advent, which is a month and change away, be invited to let Nancy Morrison know, and we'll make sure that uh, you can find your way to that. Today, though, a real test is the title of our devotion from Christ in Our Home. If you'd like to read along from home, Wait for the Lord and keep to his way, and he will exalt you, verse 34. Hear a devotion. When I was in eighth grade, my first period religion class was rife with cheating. We had a lot of fill-in-the-blank memory quizzes, and since the pastor trusted us to grade one another's work, many of my peers would leave those blanks empty until a co-conspirator could write in the correct answers as they were given. Though I often neglected my memory homework, I always took a stab at filling in my own blanks and had at least one other honest soul nearby to grade fairly. I will never forget the day the pastor read our semin semester grades aloud in front of the class. There were a lot of A's, but when it, is my, when it was my turn, all I could hear was, Goody Two-Shoes got a dreadful D. In religion! Psalm 37 says that although the wicked often prosper in the short term, God will vindicate the righteous in the end. In life, the real test is not just the score at the top of the page. It's sticking to God's way and waiting patiently on God's justice to come. There you go. I hope the devotion writer is not expecting God's justice to come down upon first. Eighth graders. I don't know. All right. Let's pray together, shall we? Faithful God, keep me true to your commandments, even when others around me ignore them. Amen. And as this day unfolds before you, be invited to pray for youth resisting peer pressure. Uh, and God bless you on your day as you continue faithful on the journey in life and faith. God bless you.